Hey, everybody. Boise State beat writer Ron Counts here with Oregon State beat writer Nick Daschle. Uh, Boise State travels to Corvallis this weekend for the season opener. Uh, big game for both teams. So Nick and I are going to kind of preview the game a little bit. Nick's going to kind of give us an inside take on Oregon State. Um, so first question, Nick, an obvious one. You know, what did Chance Nolan do to win that starting quarterback job? And what does he bring to the field that the other, that the other guys didn't? Well, he, to start with, he's the most experienced of the guys, even though Tristan Jebbia has started a number of games for Oregon State. But but Nolan Nolan started 12 of the 13 games last year, the last 12, and led him to the bowl game. And um, the, the difference between Chance and the other two, probably the versatility. He He's really the first dual threat quarterback that Jonathan's recruited to Oregon State. Um, he gives them an element of getting to the outside, although he doesn't do it a lot, but he will do it. And he just kind of became, uh, quietly kind of became a playmaker last season. I mean, he's got some flaws that he, that he needs to improve, especially hitting deep balls. But but he had some big games last year, uh, you know, in particular the Utah game where they beat, you know, they were the only team to beat Utah in the league. And and the at USC where he hit just about every pass except you know real late in the game when the game was thrown up so um but that that was really the difference I think you know the other two didn't play at all last year they were hurt and so they they had a big mountain to climb to catch chance and it probably was never going to happen and it didn't in terms of being a dual threat quarterback is he a guy that'll take off and run first or will he sit in the pocket and go through his progression and run as a last option yeah probably the latter I, you know i think i think he almost consciously wants to become that guy that stand in the in the pocket and and try to deliver something versus just taking off at the first sign of trouble um but i think we're going to see this year a little more of that just because I, I I think he kind of over overdid that a little bit the last couple of years just to prove he was that that guy. But I think he he will run. I think he's going to run a little bit more this year. The coaches haven't said that, but I, that's just my sense. And he, he's playing in front of a, a pretty talented backfield. Oregon State somehow always cranks out a thousand yard rusher. I believe it was B.J. Baylor last year who had thirteen hundred plus yards. As you look at this backfield this year, is it going to be one workhorse guy or is it going to be kind of a running back by committee? Well, it's kind of to be determined. Uh, they had five guys in camp that that all showed some ability, and it, what it came down in the end was uh, Deshaun Fenwick and Trey Lowe are are going to kind of share the starting job at least against Boise State. But I think you, you're going to see probably four guys playing. In the end, it, it might be the freshman um, Damian Martinez that ends up being the best of the bunch. But at this point, they they like what Fenwick and, and Lowe have done because they've been, they've been around, this is their fifth year. Um, you know, they've been in the system for a few years. They're both transfers, one's from South Carolina, one's from Washington. Um, Lowe gives Oregon State a, that dimension on third down. He caught a lot of passes last year. He can, he can run a little bit between the tackles, but he's more of a, he's more of a speed guy. Uh, Fenwick's your, your basic, you know, six foot, one 225 guy that's just going to try to run you over and um and he had some moments last year got hurt a little bit and obviously Baylor had a big year but but he he had a couple of hundred yard games last year so he's he's proven he he can do it if he's given the opportunity I've heard good things about Martinez how's he looked in camp so far you know he he, he looked okay I just think the problem is there's so many backs they didn't all get as many opportunities as say, you know, I've been asked that about, you know, what's the difference to him and Jefferson, Jamar Jefferson, who's mm -hmm. a freshman and he's in the, he's with the Lions now. Jefferson, when he was here, there really wasn't many backs. So he got a lot of opportunities in camp and showed it. I, I just don't think Martinez got as, as many opportunities. And, and I think he's going to get some, some chances here in these first few games to show what he can do. And I think by Oh, game four. So they, they'll know what their pecking order is. But but for now, this is what they're going to go with. And on the defensive side of the ball, there's an interesting guy in Jack Coletto, a linebacker. They also used him as some wildcat quarterback and goal line situations last year. What's his story and how do you expect them to use him this season? Right. He's kind of a he's kind of a unicorn type guy. Um, you know, I've been asked a number of times, you know, who's Oregon State recruiting is their ne next Jack Coletto? And I go, well, nobody, because there really isn't a guy like Coletto. He, you know, he was a high school quarterback. He came to Oregon State, recruited as a quarterback, 
played one year, started a game at Colorado even, I think in 2000, it was 2000, yeah, it was a 2018 game, I believe was when he started. Um, and then about midway through the 2019 season, he decided, you know, he wanted to play linebacker. And so they redshirted him and let him learn how to play linebacker. And, but they, they learned that, you know, he knows how to play quarterback. And so they've run him a lot on fourth and third down short yard situations. And he's pretty much automatic. I mean, he rarely has stopped on those fourth and two, fourth and one type plays. Um, I think they're going to expand that this year. Again, they're not saying that, but I'm just guessing there, there, there's some things they're going to try with him, you know, as a quarterback, as a, as a H back, as a tight end, as a receiver, I, I can see any number of things. I can actually see Jack playing a lot more on the offensive side than the defensive side, because he's such a weapon on, in some of those short yardage situations. Wow. As you look at the defense, what's the strength of that unit? Well, I would say the secondary is 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 probably the, the the strength. I mean, there's a couple of there's at least a couple of guys back there I think are going to get a shot in the NFL. Um, Rajon Wright, his brother plays for the Cowboys. Um, he, he's going to be one of the better corners in the Pac-12 this year. Alex Austin started a couple of years at corner. Um, Jade Grant's in his seventh year in the in the program, and he's he's a starting safety. Uh, Alton Julian, who tore up his knee as a starter last year until he got hurt against Utah. He, he probably, I'm guessing he won't play against Utah or if he does, or Utah, I guess Boise State, but he probably won't play much because he hasn't really practiced a lot. But Katan Oladapo is another guy that hits hard and he's he's been playing a lot. Um, I just, the, 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 they, their, their ability to cover has has gone up substantially in the, over the last year. They, they really have, have learned how to cover receivers. And that was the biggest takeaway from camp was watching these guys cover. Um, you know, overall, it's, this, is, this is the best defense Jonathan's had in five years. It, it's going to be one of the better defenses in the Pac-12. Um, at least I think it is. I mean, you just, you don't know until they actually get on the field and start playing other teams. But but they've got more speed and size and the outside linebackers can get to the quarterback. They got a new approach with a new defensive coordinator and Trent Bray. Um, the defensive line is getting better. It's, I'm not going to say it's great, but it's better um, just because they don't have that big, huge guy in the middle that could take on it, really take on a couple of blockers, but they're overall, they're, you know, small, quick can really get after guys. Um, inside linebackers, there's some good experience here. Omar Spates is a third year starter. Kyrie Fisher's been, you know, he's in his sixth year in college football. He's starting. Um, so like I said, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be pretty comparable with boys. He has, you know, pretty, pretty solid defense. It's probably going to be the better side of the ball between the two, actually. I, I would agree with that. And that usually happens in first games, right? The, the defense is usually ahead of the offense early in the season. I think it's a little little simpler than they're not they're not implementing the same plays. It's a little more reactionary than offenses, I think. So it's kind of a natural thing, maybe. Yeah. Um, so move, moving ahead, uh, you know, last year Oregon State uh, ended an eight-year bowl drought. They returned a lot of experienced players. How has that affected expectations this season? Well, I mean, for the first time, really, under Smith, they're they're talking about you know championship now. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of teams talking about that, and you know, can they get can they get to the Pac-12 championship game? I mean, it's it's not out of the it's not out of the realm of possibility. I, I I wouldn't say you know they're the favorite or even the second or third favorite, but if things break right and they and they play at home like they did last year, they got a good chance because they got USC and Oregon at home this year. Um, so you know, yeah, it's it's a very veteran team and that's probably a theme throughout college football that there's a lot of veteran teams but I think Oregon State's probably got more veterans than most teams they're they're real heavy with juniors and seniors and players have been around for five and six years and most of them at Oregon State and they you know they know what to expect from these coaches and this is on at least on paper it's it's the best team Smith has had. And obviously, the the construct the stadium construction is a big deal right now. I'm curious, how is that construction going to affect the game day experience? And is there anything that fans need to know if they're making the trip? Well, I mean, it, it'll be weird in that you know that whole west side of the stadium is won't be occupied by anybody other than media and and, and game day operations. So 
and they'll be the side that Boise State's on. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that affects the visiting team because normally they would have fans behind them and they're not going to have that this year. Um, I think the lighting is going to be something that people, the teams are going to have to get used to a little bit because um, the lights are going to be temporary on that one side. So that'll be an issue. If it's windy, that might be an issue just because that's, you know, when there's a vacant side, it's, it could change the way the, the wind patterns are in the stadium. Um, other than that, and uh, you know, nothing really. It's just, it's just three quarters of a stadium that people aren't used to, used to seeing. Sure. Sure. So, so last thing for me, uh, in the end, what wins this game? And if you want to do it, put a prediction on it. You know, I kind of think, you know, you think Boise State, Oregon State, you think, you know, shootout. That's just traditionally what this game would typically be. I don't think it's, I think it's going to be the opposite. I think it's going to be low scoring. I mean, I picked a 27-17 Oregon State, but again, it's the first game of the year. Yeah, there's going to be so many mistakes likely to be made. I'm guessing the team that makes fewest mistakes is going to win. I just think Oregon State is proven they can play at home. They got a lot of veterans. And so they shouldn't be, you know, overwhelmed by the moment or anything like that. I, you know, I know if maybe, well, shoot, it was like 10 years ago, Oregon State had an opener against Wisconsin and it was a 10 to seven game. I don't know if it's going to be quite like that, but it's, I, I, I think points are going to not come easily in this game. Awesome. Nick, thank you so much for doing this today. And I, I can't wait to meet you on game day. Sure, you're welcome.